Hi, and welcome to Access Chat. We're really pleased to have Sandy Wasmer here. You don't know how pleased we are to have Sandy here due to some of the fun we're, games we've had with Skype. Um, <laughs> you would not believe how difficult it is to get four people on a conference call with video all at the same time. Anyway, thank you, Bill Gates. You finally managed to make it happen. Uh, <laughs> Sandy and I have known each other for a while. Um, I think it's appropriate that uh, we invite Sandy to a Twitter chat because we met through Twitter. Uh, one of my my first people that I stalked on Twitter um, from the accessibility world, and um, we've been chatting ever since. So I'm really pleased to have you here. You started off doing inclusive design, doing some amazing stuff for, for your online agency, Copious, um, but now you're at Jewish Care and you're doing a whole bunch of other stuff. So um, can you tell us a bit more about the work that you're doing and about your organization because I don't think many people are aware of quite what Jewish Care does and, and the effect it has on people. Sure, I mean Jewish Care is a social care charity based in London, the southeast and um, we you know touch the lives of 7,000 people a week and it's a really fantastic charity that really the, the, the original focus is on care homes and community centers and bringing the community together in these different environments but you know as as society and as as um, technology has developed, Jewish Care have realized that it's really important to make sure that um, how we provide our services is appropriate to people living in the digital age. And so I came on to um, initially run a project which is called Jewish Care Interact, which we're in the process of developing at the moment. And um, through the work that I'm doing, it became clear that there were a lot of services at Jewish Care around how how people, how older and disabled people engage with technology that really formed a cohesive piece around digital engagement. So the areas that I'm responsible for is creating this fantastic new online platform, Jewish Care Interact, which will support older and disabled Jewish people in leading meaningful and independent lives. And then I also am responsible for where I'm sitting now, which is the Casey Shasha Center for Talking News and Books, which creates that just that talking news and books and magazines uh, for uh, print impaired people, as well as a, another service called Printbox, where we we have um, a team of severely physically disabled volunteers who come in and actually create um, printed marketing materials, so banners and mugs and various other printed materials. But they're at the people who are actually doing it are severely physically disabled, and so that's you know really bringing technology into people's lives. So we've got all these specially adapted equipment in order for, to support those people um, actually doing something of value. And we think that's really important. And the other area that I'm responsible for uh, is called the Carton Centers. And I don't know if you guys know about Ian Carton, who was a guy who passed away a few years ago, who set up a whole bunch of centers. He made a lot of money in medical devices and he wanted disabled people to be able to use technology on par with their non-disabled peers and created centers all around the UK and in Israel that um, support disabled people learning how to use technology. So all of these areas are coming under digital services now. And so it's, you know, if we build a website you know, that, that, that supports older and disabled people and aging well and living independently, we also have um, the Carton Center that can teach them how to use technology to access that service. So it's being part of the digital engagement piece in every step of the way. That sounds fantastic. It is. It's really such a fantastic opportunity uh, to be working here. I've been here 10 months and it's just gone by in about two seconds. It's terrific. I think one of the interesting things is the, the whole sort of ecosystem that you've got going on there. Uh, most people, when they're, they're working, and, and I see this a lot, are working on discrete projects and you don't get to work with people so much. What, what you're doing here, you're working with communities and, and I think that that gives real value and insight. Um, I'm particularly interested also in, in the stuff around the, the talking books and, and, and the stuff that you're doing around that because I think that's a really under-talked about area of, of, of access and, and, and an area where people probably get a lot of value but it's not, it's not something that we hear talked about a lot in terms of accessibility. Well, it's really interesting because I think a lot of people think talking books are just for visually impaired people like me, but it's for anyone who's print impaired. And print impaired means anyone who can't hold a book. So if you're visually impaired or if you um, have MS or Parkinson's or cerebral palsy or any reason you can't hold a book. So it's not just visually impaired people who listen to books. It's it's all sorts of people. And, you know, the books we create here um, at Casey Shusher are Jewish related. And we also do a weekly uh, version of the Jewish Chronicle, which is a 
the UK Jewish newspaper, and we also do some audio, a couple of um, audio magazines, so that we have a, a nice mix of content for our members, so that they can access different type, different types of content. But it's it's you know it's it's supporting people in leading in leading rich, meaningful lives. Because it's one thing about providing access to a service. It's another providing a service like listening to audiobooks. I mean, you know, having literature as part of your life and ha or having news and current affairs and all those things you may not otherwise have access to. Um, it's really important. I mean, accessibility, you know, I talk a lot, you know, I come from digital, I come from web, you know, and you can think about accessibility being about technical conformance. But sometimes it's something as simple as giving someone a USB stick and letting them listen to some content. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, do you have any uh, any app, apps that uh, where those services are available and people can listen the, the, those the, the audio formats from? Well, the the, the KC Shasha service, you know, the Jewish community in the UK is quite small, so it's it's it doesn't have a large member base, and so we distribute um, the the service on CD and USB stick. Hopefully, in the future, we'll be able to do digital downloads, but at the moment, that's that's. That's something that we're looking to do in the future. Um, and the the Jewish Care Interact service is just being developed at the moment. I've just appointed a fantastic London-based digital agency called Binary Vision. Um, the guy, one of the guys who runs it is also uh, one of the organizers of London Web Standards, so some people very much in the community. And, um, you know, so we're developing that that platform now called Jewish Care Interact, and uh, I guess it's a watch this space on that one. No, there's a very interesting <laughs> application for Android and iOS called Humano, where people can submit news that can be later be read by by someone so and then oh. that could be available on iOS and, and Android yeah well, that's a that's a really interesting service i mean i guess for us the because our service is specific to the jewish community there's you know we we need to look at content that may be relevant to our audience but i think an app like that that's amazing so who actually does the um who actually uh, reads it uh, how does that work uh, you can submit news, and somebody from that community will end up uh, doing that if it's if it's accepted by the owners of the of the software. Right, cool. Okay. So it's crowdsourced audio books. That sounds that sounds yeah. great. I used to get the C ninety tapes um, sent to me because I used to get audio books because of my dyslexia um, when I was studying, and I used to get the C ninety tapes delivered. In, on mass from my from my masters with a great big thing saying articles for the blind on the top you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah but it's like things like you know if you think about a service i don't know if you guys have heard of be my eyes yes you know and a service like be my eyes i mean how does that fit into accessibility it's actually providing someone access to support services you know it's still access to so i always find it's like i like to think about accessibility in those broad terms yeah, no, I, I agree. I think that it's an assistive technology and that assistive technology and accessibility have the same aims, Yeah. but sometimes approach it from, from different angles. Deborah, I know you had a question. I, I do, and Tandy, thanks for being patient with us as we worked out our technology problems. But <laughs> it um, a question I would have is, <laughs> it, it definitely does. Um, I know that you had your own agency and you were, you know, you, you're very well known in our accessibility and disability inclusion space. But um, it is interesting that you joined this organization and that you're really starting to have, um, you, you're really starting to have some impact. And so I would be curious if you have um, some advice for other organizations um, and I mean that in the broadest sense of the word of, you know, what could they do to really start following your, your lead um, to really have impact? It's because a lot of people are just talking about impact. Know your users and talk to them. I mean, it's really as simple as communicating with the people who use your service. And invariably, 20% of those people are going to be disabled. And, you know, however many percent of those people are going to be older, you know, the older and disabled demographic it's 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 part of anyone's customer base and so you know if you're providing a mainstream service um, then talk to your users I mean you know in all the services that, that I'm developing here at Jewish care 
you know, it, research comes first. You know, you, you, you have to understand who you're developing the service for. So if you, if you think, oh, I'm developing the service for that disabled person over there and you're not talking to that person, then you're making assumptions and you're going to get it wrong. So, you know, the best bet is to talk to as many people as possible and understand who's using your service and how they use your service. I, I know that while we were waiting, we were, we were chatting away. So um, to revisit some of this stuff, uh, I'm particularly interested in the fact that you're working with older populations and, and uh, people interact with technology differently. Obviously, there's attitude and, and people's personal attitudes and where they've come from and their background will affect the way that they use uh, technology. But has the fact that you're working with older people made it made your approach to the technology different because I, I've seen the accessibility industry tend to focus a little bit too much to my mind on super users yeah I think it's it's really interesting and I certainly had some um, some ideas uh, preconceptions about how older people use technology and I've been proven very wrong you know it's it's so much more than age it's so many different um, Quite different influences. So, you know, some of it is socioeconomic, some of it is, you know, if you worked, you know, if you worked during your working life, if you're older, or where you work, what you did when you worked, where you live, what kind of family support system you have. So, you know, I know people who are 65 and won't go near a computer, and I've got a volunteer who works, who works in one of my services who's 97. And when I asked him, um, you know, oh, do you use a computer? He said, yeah, it's 2015, like I was nuts. You know, so it's just... It, <laughs> You know, it's just it's just like it is really different and, and making the assumption that just because you're older doesn't mean you don't engage with technology. And particularly as people age now and as we live longer, you know, there's a whole emerging population of what I refer to as the act of old who are who are working with technology and using technology a lot and, you know, and, and who are digitally engaged. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's. It certainly made me realize that, you know, it's the same as somebody approaching an audience, disabled people, you know, like all disabled people are the same. You know, it's it, it's that sort of, you know, when you think about older people as being non-adopters of technology, it just couldn't be more, you, you know, I, I, I thought I was going to face a lot of attrition and I haven't, you know, I faced a mix in the same way you would really in, in any other population. It's, it, there's a variety. Yeah, no, no, that, and 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 I see that even even close to home. So um, you know, with my my own parents, with my my dad spending all day on his iPad, and my mum being dragged kicking and streaming uh, to 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 try and use a computer, which she stopped using fifteen years ago when she stopped working. Yeah, um, but there has to be a need. I mean, it's yeah. just, and that's the same for anyone, whether you're older, disabled, younger, not, whatever. I mean, you know, it, it's it's all about having a need. What do I want to do? That's why apps are so popular. Yes. It's, it's like you, know, you have an app, you have a, a, a single thing you want to do. I want to Skype. I want to talk to somebody else. Fine. Yeah, I want, I, you know, I, or, or yeah. you know, whatever it is, whatever sort of task or function you want to do, it's that single simplicity of apps that make that, you know, that, that, that make them so popular because it's just, this is what I want to do. So when you have a need, you'll find that, that in time you'll adopt the technology if, if that need is strong. When we did our research, it was really interesting because if we'd done our research and we were, at, at, you know, the research we did for Jewish Contract, we went out to a bunch of resources and talked to whole lots of different people and there was this one woman and she was in her 80s now if I had said to her do you use Skype she would have not known what I was talking about but we said we, she was telling us she had family in Israel and we were like oh do you, how do you speak to them oh I talked to them on the TV she's using Skype she just doesn't yeah. know so it's also like how, how what people understand technology is but the need was there for her to talk to her grandchildren in Israel and so she adopted a technology, but she's not using a computer otherwise. So, you know, it, it is really about, you know, about engaging people with technology when there's a need. Yeah, I think that's, that's absolutely true. And it's completely borne out. My mum now has an iPad mini and the only thing that she uses it for is for, for FaceTime. Yeah, it's I want to talk with the kids and I want to wave that's at right. the kids. Yeah. So they have that need that can only be met. I mean, can be the, the the best way to meet that need is through technology because not only do you get to talk to your children, you get to see them. I yeah. mean, yeah, that that's definitely meeting an incredible need. So, 
No, I I, had, I was do, uh, doing uh, training um, for for people uh, uh, about technology on, on Mondays here in Cork, and the first request that I had it was about you no, know, how can I talk with my friends in Australia? How can I talk with my family? And the first is how to use a conference, how to, how to be, uh, how to use Skype, how to manage a conference call, and then slowly people start to realize, oh, and uh, there's some really nice uh, tablets that I can buy for you know 100 euros. And I would like to know how to use it. No, how can I use the tablet? What can I do with it? What apps yeah, so, should I use? Right. Which is all needs based. It's all there's a need there, and you're meeting that need. And that's how people. I mean, you know, technology adoption is always best when it's an extension of natural human behavior. I want to do this. I do it in my life, and now technology can facilitate that. That's when it, when it, when te technology adoption is sustained. No, uh, and then I was talking with them, and they were struggling. Oh, uh, it's very difficult for me to access to the apps from my bank, you know. Uh, so uh, I was, uh, and then you realize that w when you try to, to use the app yourself, you realize that the app is not, is, it's universally designed, it, and, and so, but sometimes doesn't meet the needs of people who are just starting to use a device like this. And yeah. they struggle to find, what they want to find is they want to be able to trust in the app and make sure that they are doing the right actions and they don't do mistakes. And the apps don't actually help them to do that. No, that's, I mean, that's, that, but that, you know, is that accessibility or is that UX? I mean, to me, it's just good UX, I think, generally. You know, there's, there's you know, that th th you find, I find that a lot of websites and apps are just poorly designed, period. It's nothing to do with accessibility. Yeah, I, th I think that, that the UX issues are, are, are effectively magnified when yeah. it comes to cognitive disability and that yeah. things like banking apps, they're a real problem for me. Um, <laughs> You know, putting anything in in a sequence. I lock myself out of my bank account quite frequently, um, so <laughs> it's a bit of a bug there. Um, I'm aware that you have a cab home, so we need to we need to wind up. But it's been great, and and um, we'll see you online tomorrow night. Um, Thank you so much, it's guys. Been it's been a pleasure talking to you, Sandy. It's been a pleasure. Um, and and um, wish we could have spoken for longer on the on the record and off. <laughs> but um but thank you yes, you got my number yeah i know <laughs> Excellent. thank you sandy oh, thank, thank you sandy you know, and thank you antonio it's been an absolute pleasure thank right. you so so we are closing down the call thank you so much and see you all on twitter tomorrow bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.